Now, the Prince and Princess of Wales are expected to head to Scotland soon for some much-needed R&R, following what has been an extremely busy few months in their royal calendars. And if a recent poll is to be believed, Prince William can do this with a smile on his face, knowing that all his hard work is suddenly appearing to pay off. The poll in question was designed to gauge the popularity of several high-profile newsworthy figures amongst the American public. And happily for William, he came top of the list beating even the president of uh, the United States himself, as well as the likes of the Ukrainian president, President Zelensky. King Charles also achieved a very respectable fourth place in the polls. So what can we take away from this? Does this mean that the international story uh, is a good story right now for the royal family following the stresses and the fallout of Megxit? Absolutely. And I think, you know, obviously, I mean, I've said on this show before that we can't, you know, we have to remember it is a British monarchy and it's the Commonwealth countries that it's their opinion that it's primary. And I, I stand by that. But I think it is. But interesting to have it reflected back from a country where actually totally. their reign doesn't matter as much. Well, I think I also was, I think I was right but incomplete when I said that and I was therefore wrong. And which <laughs> is that you also have to acknowledge and accept that one of the monarchy's great assets is this soft power and the diplomatic prestige it can bring to Britain. Um, there's a, an Austrian diplomat who said, you know, every four years, I just wish we had the Habsburgs back so we could dazzle people for a while. <laughs> and it do, I do think that the monarchy has that impact. And it isn't good for British um, reputations and diplomacy abroad if the royals are struggling in the polls the way they were but so for the country for the for the dip for the diplomacy of britain it is excellent and for the royals individually i'm sure it's a nice boon i mean the, the let's just run through the um let's go through the top five mm. shall we number one with 59 percent of the vote uh, uh the prince of wales uh second place Zelensky. i mean is there a greater Statesman at, the, at this current right. time. No, um, uh, William beat him. Uh, Joe Biden at 49, uh, with 49% in third place. King Charles just behind her uh, with 46%. And in the fifth place, uh, John Roberts, the Supreme Court Chief, Chief Justice. So keeping some very, very powerful company there. Mm. It would seem that, that Prince William's really putting his best foot forward. Yeah, I think he is. I think they've, they've really taken to him in America, which will be bad news for his younger brother who lives there, I expect. Um, but we saw um, out there in, at, at the Earthshot Awards last year in Boston, uh, Kate and William turned up. I mean, Princess of Wales looked a million dollars when she went out there. She was in this sort of green goddess dress. Mm. And there is that kind of, they have the sparkle. There's a but huge respect. they were going under a bit of a cloud, don't forget. You know, when they were last over in the States, there was the whole Susan Hussey, um, sca well, was it scandal. It was a sparkle, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it, was, a, it was a nightmare for mm. them. Um, the, fir the first day of their, uh, of their very small three-day visit to Boston, and they thought, well, this is going to probably derail it. But, which um, was almost kind of like, you know, forming some sort of echo chamber following on from Harry and Meghan's sit-down mm. interview with Oprah Winfrey. Well, what happened is they got ahead of it straight away, and their spokesman said, you know, racism has no place in society. I think that that's something that they absolutely stand by. And, uh, and, and it didn't derail it. It sort of moved on from it. And when we were there in Boston, you saw the sort of magnetism that they have. I don't think it's a surprise that he's, he's topped this poll. Um, I think that these, the sort of celebrity culture, not only in America but in UK, is, uh, is pretty fickle anyway. And, uh, and as much as people were willing Harry and Meghan to do well to succeed, as soon as they started throwing you know, these trash bombs all over the place and, um, and her trying to hurt the royal family, I think people pulled away from that. And I think that the, the, the markers of what makes people a success in America is loyalty, your family, mm -hmm. and sort of dedication to your, to your duty or love for your country. And that's the embodiment of these two, whilst keeping your counsel and and, you know, and not being rude about people, I suppose. Yeah, yeah that's a great but, point. To but put. combining that with some really good work, I mean, he's back yeah. in uh, New York in September for mm. Earthshot. Earthshot is, I mean, a hugely important project to him. But and ties in with the Americans as well, really because does, it yeah. comes from Moonshot, from JF Kennedy's idea yeah. that within a decade they would put somebody on the moon. Similarly, Williams using the same theme in order to save the planet. So the idea is within a decade, the planet will be in a much better position um, for the future than it was at the beginning of the project. And his, he was supposed to go to, to New York to the UN last September, of course, but it was postponed because the 
the late Queen um, sadly passed away, so he couldn't make that trip. Mm. So it's been a long time coming, but I think they, they'll welcome him with open arms. And he knows that in order to save the planet in his big quest, he's going to have to have America on side. He's going to have other countries on side. The world inside. needs to be behind him, It's yeah. a global project, so he'll be thrilled, I expect, that he's you know so high up the polls, and such a prestigious poll as well. Absolutely. Uh, but his father's done very well as well. I mean, uh, you know, the Queen was much loved uh, by the American public. It was always interesting to see, would they take as well to a new monarch? Yes, there was that. They, and Diana is so well loved well, in the, the States. it's the Diana thing, isn't mm. it? That's something that really surprised me. But and a year into the reign, I think we can say that it's been a very successful first year for, for, for the king. And I think King Charles III, the new Carolean era, mm. has has dawned, you know, also, and he's embraced it. I think also, yeah, I completely agree, because I was, the Diana thing loomed in my head when I was looking at the figures, and I, but I think, not to take away, because I do think the king has had a, a sort of blinder of a first year, but I also think in some paradoxical way he was helped by the sheer venom of some of his critics because mm. they set the bar so low for Charles III. You know, the monarchy would collapse, people would be in the streets, everyone wanted William, not Charles. All Charles really had to do was not burn the house down, and mm. he would have exceeded the expectations they set for him. So I think in some ways this is a, a big rebuttal of, of critics who said he was going to be a complete disaster because he hasn't been either in his own actions or with the public. Well, on that point, and people saying he's had a great year, I do agree with that, but it's been very much a transitional year. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been a lot that has happened. I mean, we're expecting, you know, hit the ground running, get out to the I Commonwealth, don't know. It's not get into the realms. I, to be honest, I would have expected a lot more foreign travel. I would have expected to get straight out to the realms. I think the palace are. Really? You know, I th yeah, I think the, the, the okay. palace. Are, I think the palace will be nervous after um, William and Kate's tour of the Caribbean. Mm. That is a hotbed uh, of issues for for the king and the rest of the royal family because if his legacy is a domino effect of countries, you know, leaving their association with the monarchy, such as Jamaica is planning, you know, you've got Antigua making moves to 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 do the same. That will be quite a legacy and. Um, it's very, very much a, uh, a softly, softly approach at the moment, I think. But they'll have to step it up. And as we expect Charles to get out to the Commonwealth, a potential trip to Kenya in the next few months, um, where will he go, and how will he, how will, he, well, how will he be received? Well, it'd be interesting to see. For it'd sure. be very, very interesting. Yeah. One thing we have learned: don't underestimate him. Mm. No, not at all. And also, it's interesting though. I think William and Catherine have, whilst they have been doing a lot of travel across the rest of the Commonwealth recently, I have seen a real consistency in making sure they go to all four countries within the United Kingdom. I mean, when William was doing his, um, the launching of the Homeless Initiative, which is just extraordinary, they, if you look at the numbers, they made sure to pick from Northern Ireland, Wales, Scotland, yeah. England equally, and mm. the visits were all timetabled immaculately. So this is, I think, something that was in the palace of, you know, the union is not as strong as it was mm. under Elizabeth II, so they have to be seen to, to uphold that. And the Scottish referendum, perhaps, and then uh, yeah. absolutely. in the future. So absolutely. much, so much to consider. Um, Russ, can I ask you about reports that were carried in the mirror, um, suggesting that whilst um, William and Harry are unlikely to be in the same room any time soon, mm. that uh, the Princess of Wales has been speaking with the Duke of Sussex. Listen, I think that the, the relationships are very, very strained at the moment, and I think that um, any re reports carried, I think this was a secondary report that we carried, but um, you see, I, back, back when, all the, when, it, when all was going wrong, certainly Kate was trying to be that peacemaker. She was the one who brought them together. There was a visit at Frogmore Cottage. Um, whether that is happening now, I think that her loyalty certainly very, very much, obviously, is with her husband, is with the, with the Crown. And I think they're, they're going to ha ha let Harry and Meghan m make their own life, really, because they've made their own mistakes, and they sort of certainly have to pick up the pieces of their relationships with the monarchy. So whether she was a pe peacemaker back in the day, certainly, uh, I don't think she will be in the future, because when you pull up this, uh, this picture here, this was definitely an, uh, an olive branch of a certain time, but it hasn't been carried forward, and, uh, and I think that that's on both sides. That was two days after the Queen yeah. passed away. To come and see the flowers. The unexpected invitation and, to yeah, walk about. They invited the Sussexes to walk about. Mind you, a lot's happened since then. Yeah. So in the January, we've had Harry's book, and I don't think we're going to see that picture again 
maybe ever. Because I, think, mm. I mean, also just as we were talking about William's popularity in America, I think regardless of what you think about the Sussexes, the numbers that that book sold and the numbers of people who tuned in for their documentary are, by, are extraordinary. I mean, mm. they are record breaking. And if you look back through it, by far and away, the member of the royal family who came up for the most number of negative comments in the book was Prince William. I mean, we were surprised at how little his father sort of took mm. flack lies in that book. So I think, yeah, I would imagine that Spare has certainly... But let us not forget, discussion. that was one book of a three-book deal. Will he go through with it? I'm not sure. I think he'll have to... I, I expect a second Netflix series, you know, what Harry and Meghan did next. Mm. I think there's certainly an appetite for that. What are they doing? I mean, they, you know, they're, they're not trashing the royal family and they're not doing podcasts. Interesting and, uh, that you asked that, Russell. Well, because here there's we go. news. <laughs> <laughs> because I have news. A perfect <laughs>